TV. I'm your host, Jeff White. And in today's episode, I want to talk to you guys about unexplained reactions or unexplained bites. I've been getting a lot of emails lately that have been like, you know, I'm getting bit by something and I can't identify the source. I'm seeing a reaction in the morning and I don't know what's causing it. What do you think? And that's a very difficult question for me to answer. You know, I'm sitting here at my desk and without me seeing the problem firsthand, it's almost impossible for me to give you any insight in regards to what could be causing that reaction. But what I want to do in this episode is present you with some options for you to consider in regard to trends that you see with certain types of insects and what the cause may be. Now, one thing I want to reference up front is an outstanding article that was written by Dr. Michael Potter at the University of Kentucky called Invisible Itches. You can get this article online if you go to any search engine and type in Invisible Itches, University of Kentucky, Dr. Michael Potter. You should be able to find this article. And this goes through a lot of the things that I'm going to cover today in this episode. So please read this article. Great article. will help you identify a source that may be causing your reactions. So what we're going to start with is insects. And believe it or not, there are very few insects that can infest the home that can cause repeated reactions. And the first one we're going to start with is, of course, bed bugs. Here you are watching Bed Bug TV, so you're obviously concerned about bed bugs. If you think you have bed bugs, you obviously want to do a brief inspection of your bed or couch. Those are the two most common areas you're going to find bed bugs. And we have videos right here on Bed Bug TV that will help you do a good bed bug, uh, couch or uh, bed inspection for bed bugs. So please look those videos up, and you want to do that inspection. And also be aware that bed bug bites tend to show up in rows and clusters on exposed skin surfaces. So if you're seeing, you know, bites show up in rows or groups of threes, that's typically what they show up in, on the arms, neck, or face, those are all reactions that are consistent with bed bugs. And so if that is happening, you may want to complete the inspection we talked about before. And so just keep in mind that low-level bed bug infestations can be difficult to find. There are some products out there that can help you identify a problem. One of the better ones is the Climb Up Insect Interceptor, which we also have an episode filmed on Bedbug TV you can look up. And these intercept bugs as they travel to and from the bed, and they can be very effective in identifying low-level problems. We also have bed encasements that you can st install on your mattress or box spring that will help you identify problems as well. And so, rows and clusters of bites on exposed skin surfaces, complete inspection of the better couch, and you want to consider hiring a knowledgeable professional to do that. Bed bugs can be difficult to find, and a knowledgeable pest control professional may be a better person to rely on to do that inspection. So, there's bed bugs. Another insect that can infest the home is, of course, fleas. Fleas are typically associated with a household pet, whether it be a dog or a cat, and flea bites tend to appear around the ankles. They tend to bite the lower extremities. And so if you're getting a lot of bites around the ankles and you have a dog or a cat, especially one that sleeps in bed with you, you might want to consider fleas as an option. You can take a look at your dog or cat and see if you can see fleas running around underneath the fur. And you can also visit your local veterinarian and see if you can get your dog or cat on flea and or tick prevention. That's very important for dogs and cats, and of course you want to visit your vet to get the proper recommendations for that. Just be aware you can also hire a pest control professional to come in and inspect your home. And so fleas are a possibility, bites around the ankles tend to be associated with dogs or cats, but that's not definitive. There are some weird examples out there where you may get something going on that you know you don't have a dog or a cat. So it's something worth considering. Now. Outside of bed bugs and fleas, a lot of the other ones I'm going to talk about in a second are a little less common. We do have some mites out there that can cause you skin irritations. One example is rodent and bird mites, which are typically associated with rodent and bird nests. So if you have birds nesting in the side of your house and you're getting some sort of rash on your uh, excuse me, rash on your skin, rash, it's like a hybrid a rash on your skin, you may want to get those nests either removed from the actual home or have a pest control professional come out and inspect those and inspect your home for mite issues. There's also chiggers out there. Now, chiggers do not typically infest the home, but if you're outside a lot walking in the woods in tall grass or brush lines, that's where chiggers are typically associated. And if you're getting a lot of reactions, especially in areas where your clothes touch your skin, so the belt line, that's a very common area where you'll see a chigger reaction. And so that might be something worth considering. And then the last mite I want to talk about is the scabies mite. A scabies mite can cause a skin reaction, and that is a reaction that's better left to a medical professional. 
So if you're receiving any of these types of reactions, any types of rashes you can't explain, you probably want to visit a medical professional to see if they can't identify the source of the problem. And if it is scabies, that is something that's better left to medical professionals, that's not typically a problem that's handled by pest control professionals. So, outside of mites, we have a few left. Mosquitoes, if you think you're being bit by a mosquito, it has to be gaining access to your house somehow. And typically that's through a broken or torn screen. So you want to check your screens if you think it's mosquitoes. And if you seal up any holes, hopefully that reaction stops. Lice is one another example that it could be. If you think you have lice or a louse problem, you obviously want to go visit a medical professional. Any pest control company that sells you that they're the person to solve your problem, that's a pest control company that's misleading you. Lice cannot live off the human body for an extended period of time, so they do not typically infest homes. And so if you have a lice problem or a louse problem, you want to visit a medical professional. Outside of that, the last one I can think of are spiders. Anybody who receives a spider bite loves to, you know, blame unexplained bites on spiders. Spiders do not typically bite humans. You can get isolated incidents of spider bites, but anybody who's receiving a repeated reaction, it's typically not spiders. And so if you're not seeing spiders running around your house, you know, probably not the cause of your reaction, and it's not common that spiders bite humans. Again, a pest control professional can help you identify that. Just keep in mind that people love to blame things on spiders, but spiders do not typically bite humans, and so that's probably not the, the, the source of your reaction. Now, those are your insects that, you know, typically are the source of reactions, and outside of that, there aren't really any options that I can think of that are out there. I'm sure there's one or two very isolated incidents, but those are your major groups of insects that cause reactions. And again, pest control professionals and medical professionals can help you identify that. Outside of those, many of the reactions that I receive emails about are actually not insect related. Even though something may look just like an insect bite, it doesn't necessarily need to be insect related. And so if you're receiving reactions, that's why we say you might want to visit a medical professional because it may not be insect related. It could be a detergent, a perfume, a deodorant, an allergen of some sort that's causing that reaction and a medical professional can help you identify that. Just be aware that actually, you know, when we get calls for reactions and emails, whatever the case may be, a lot of times it is not insect related. It is related to some sort of allergen. And just because you were using a detergent for 10 years and you never reacted to it, it doesn't mean you all of a sudden can't start reacting. And so visiting a medical professional will help you identify those causes. All right, everybody. So those are your, you know, options for unexplained itches or bites. If you have any questions about these, you know, different options, you can email me, jeff.white at bedbugcentral.com. And we talked about the article before, Invisible Itches. Look it up online, read it, great article. We'll further explain what I talked about in this episode. All right, everybody. I hope to see everybody soon enough.